a funeral should be a celebration of life. It should be a celebration that they the soul finished this experience, that this was such a beautiful, unique experience to the soul that they came here to learn the lessons that they were meant to learn. There will never be another experience like it in all of creation. And this must be honored and cherished and loved. Instead, funerals have been distorted in your reality where they are meant for the family members to grieve because people have never been taught how to deal with their emotions that when your loved ones passed or if you don't have that belief in divinity that they are eternal souls only living a human experience then there is much grief in the lost in the loss there is much grief in the loss whereas if you can see it as an eternal being having a completely unique soul expression through a physical body, then you can actually celebrate that experience. Now, I know that we are connect our soul signature frequency, the soul's resonance does have a connection with our DNA. So when we are buried, the body being here, if we're still on the astral plane, does our physical body being here buried, like give us a better place to come to like easier for us to hone in, to come back to this frequency if we want to visit this plane or does it not matter if our body exists here or not? It is the way that the soul is expressed through the physical body. So there are different yogis that have passed where their consciousness has passed, but they were so divinely connected to their body and the soul expression within their physical body that when they chose to go into a different experience, their body still had life in it. Like their body didn't start to decompose until weeks afterwards. And when you can connect to the DNA of your body and the physicality, the soul expression through the physical body then you can transcend the physical experience of what is known to this reality. It's beautiful. Now, if you were to be choose to be cremated, would that mean that you wouldn't have a connection here to earth and it would release you from needing to come back to earth because it would alchemize that connection? Or would you still, if you had lessons here, come back to earth? Because I figured if I got cremated, that maybe it would release me from my contract here. (laughs) No offense. (laughs) Yes, you could see it as a transmutation of energy. You could see it as transmuting energy of this life from your physical body. But at the same time, the soul is completely unlimited. On the other side, there is absolutely no limitations. And the only limitations you put on yourself are your own beliefs and ideas. And so having the belief that you have to come back into this life to finish some kind of lesson is what's going to pull you back into the resonance of that life. Beautiful. So based on that... Is there a recommendation of the best way in preservation to what we're here to experience, whether cremation or burial would be more beneficial? Like what would, if we were being advised of what we should do as far as our resting place, what would you advise? As far as the actual burial process, it is not as important. What is important is the the soul traveling from the point where the soul exits the body to the point of the soul plane or either its next lifetime because that's where souls can get lost in transition and so it is important that's why uh, a lot of people are being called to be like death doulas and to escort souls into the afterlife and this is something that Isis did was she would escort souls into the afterlife so that they found the path 
that where they were choosing to go next. And that was a lot of like rituals and burials. It was all meant to guide the soul as it leaves the body so that they get to the place where they need to go. So the reason why you're supposed to wait at least three days to have a funeral when somebody passes is because that soul is still in the astral or it could still be in the astral while it's transitioning. And if you have a funeral for it immediately, then that grief and those emotions almost pull that soul back into this reality and it can actually get trapped or almost like lost in translation as it's moving into the afterlife. Wow. I didn't even think of that. That actually makes so much sense. Like, cause it's a shock to their system. Um, unless they're naturally detached. Like I, when my mom passed, she was in hospice and you saw her progressively through the week. You could see her soul detaching from the body the way it was, um, the way the process was. And I can understand how she would naturally go to the light because she had that time. But if it was a sudden death, they might be shocked in that realm and a little confused. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, absolutely. And it's more like the people in the physical realm. If we lose somebody, if we lose a loved one, the best thing that you could do for that soul that is transitioning is almost detach yourself from the loss and send them so much love that they get to where they need to go. Instead of like being like, I can't let go. I wasn't ready for this person to leave and being in your grief and in your trauma. What is happening is if you're not letting go of that soul energetically it's like you're pulling that soul back in towards you and you're not letting it transition into that afterlife energetically that makes so much sense because I don't know if you've ever you know if anyone here listening has ever lost someone but you have this natural urge um to say it's okay it's okay be at peace. And it's like something inside of you just knows this intuition to naturally tell them. Like we didn't even tell my mom she was dying. Like we never said you're dying or anything like that. We just sat and loved her through the experience just so it wouldn't, she didn't have to fear it, you know, but you do have this natural, you want to comfort them to relax and to release. And, and it makes so much sense what you're saying, because It's our spirit guiding us through that process as they're going through their process and not pulling them into this realm. Um, So I have heard before, speaking of the transition state to if you were to pass, to be aware of what light you are going into, that there is a false light. And to me, that never resonated because I felt like light is light is light. How can it be a false light? But is there anything you can tell us about when, like, if we were to pass, is there a false light? It's not so much a false light. It's being blinded by the beliefs of your current life. So when you get to the other side, your beliefs are the most powerful thing that you have and your beliefs to stick with you. So you're going to be downloaded all the information of your past lives. But if you truly in your soul believe something so deeply, so if you believe that you will go to hell when you leave this physical body, when you get to the other side, that will be created for you in the other side. Until you realize, and the soul will always eventually come back to its soul's essence, rather it be through different places in the construct that help them see past those beliefs, different beings will come to them. No soul is ever lost, but for a time being, your thoughts and your beliefs manifest instantly. So if they leave a physical body and they are instantly manifesting hell for themselves on the other side, then they will be trapped in hell or in purgatory or any way that you want to see it. And that's why you hear people say that they followed the false light because they are trapped in their own belief system until they can see that the only thing entrapping the soul is their own beliefs. 